So James Jewell is James Jewell is doing all these experiments with his paddle machine, and he's heating up fluids, and uh, he notices that different fluids heat up different amounts. Different fluids. I guess I could argue as a 21st century scientist, different fluids store heat differently. So we need to find a way to account for that. Once I finish writing this, we need to find a way to account for this fact and maybe study it in a little more detail. But the one thing that's pretty obvious is that if you put a pot of, I don't know, gold on the stove, and you put a pot of water on the stove, and you put a pot of molten aluminum on the stove, and they're on the stove for the same amount of time, they won't be the same temperature. So different things are bit able to either better or more poorly store some amount of heat. And we can describe this by a quantity called heat capacity. This is a very, very easily misunderstood quantity. So let's talk about it for a little bit. Heat capacity, I'm going to define as capital C, and it is Q, that's the amount of heat going into the thing, divided by the change in temperature. So something that's able to store heat very efficiently, you give it some amount of heat and the temperature doesn't change very much. Water is one of these awesome substances that stores heat very efficiently. And something that stores heat very poorly would change its temperature a lot for a given amount of heat. So that would have a very, ooh, if it changes its temperature a lot for a given amount of heat coming in, then that would have a very small heat capacity. Something has a heat capacity if it's able to efficiently store energy. Like a lot of heat pockets, you could say. You get this kid and he's putting on some of these cargo pants and you know, he's wearing these cargo pants and, and they're, um, they've got a pocket here and 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 four pockets on the back can't even show them, but all those pockets enable it, that kid to store energy very efficiently. That's, analogy is breaking down, so we should stop that right now. But I want to define this Q a little bit gently. Here's what I want to say. Q is positive if heat is adding to the system. And this, you're going to find a lot of people who disagree with me, but this is a definition that I'm making right now, and I like it. I think it makes more sense than what the chemists say. Q is positive if heat is added to the system. Many people use the exact opposite, and it's really frustrating going between the two sets of equations, but I'm going to stick with my side, and that's what it says. And Q is negative if heat leaves system. Of course, this requires the definition of some system in which you're interested, but we'll always define something we're looking at and the rest of the universe as the other. So that will be fine. <clears throat> so heat capacity is cool, but think about it like this. If James Jewell had a tiny little paddle device and he added a certain amount of energy to a tiny little bowl of water, it would heat up a lot. But if he had that same amount of energy and he added it to a pot of water, then it would not heat up very much. And we certainly don't want to describe water by its heat capacity because it depends on how much water you're talking about. So we're going to talk about something more specific. Oh, let's call it specific heat. And rather than just this definition, I'll define something called specific heat. Let's use brown for that. Specific heat. Specific heat just takes that same heat capacity and divides it by mass. So specific heat is a lowercase c because look, it's so much smaller. See that? This is really big and that's much smaller because we're dividing per unit mass. How much can each unit of mass store? And so that's just going to be capital Q divided by M times delta T. Those of you who may be studying for uh, um, an exam in medicine would be edified perhaps to see that Q then is equal to M cat. See? So you can remember that. What fun. 
That is the heat that goes into a substance. Well, I guess it depends on the mass, right? Uh, and it depends on the specific heat. Oh, yes, it quite does. And it depends on the change in temperature of the system. This is not the right way to look at this, though. I want you to look at it like this. The change in temperature of a substance depends on the heat that goes into it. Yeah, more heat change is going to change the temperature more. But also, it depends inversely on how much mass you've got. You got more mass, it's not going to change the temperature as much, of course. And it depends inversely on the specific heat. So if the specific heat is big, the change in temperature will be small. And if the specific heat is small, it's not a very good material for storing thermal energy, then you'd find the change in temperature to be big. Awesome. And you can do cool things like calorimetry. And this is an enormous activity, and I'd certainly encourage you to consider it. I'm going to say that if I have some liquid in this uh, beaker, let's put, uh, oh, let's make it a gray liquid. What if I had mercury or something? That'd be fun. So I have some liquid in here, and I drop in some metal block. This is, uh, let's say this is the mass of my block, and this is the, um, this is the mass of my liquid, then um, we can figure out what temperature those guys together would come to. So uh, I guess uh, maybe the block is hot and the liquid's cold, or maybe the liquid's hot and the block is cold. It doesn't really matter. But if we wait for an infinite amount of time, yeah, this is going to be a long lab. If we wait for an infinite amount of time, then we'll find that they reach ultimately the same temperature. So I can write that as the heat for the block plus the heat for the liquid is equal to zero. So one of these suckers is going to be losing heat. Let's say the block's losing heat. Then Q for the block is negative, and Q for the liquid is positive. And if you add those two together, you get zero. I'm assuming that we insulate this sucker, because if it's not insulated, this will not be true. You got to be careful. All kinds of ways for heat to leave a situation. So insulate it very carefully. But I know that the heat that left the block, check this out. This is our equation for heat. Remember MCAT? The heat that left the block is the mass of the block times the specific heat of the block times the change in temperature of the block, which is the temperature final. <gasps> They'll come to the same temperature. So it's not going to be the temperature of the block final. It's going to be the temperature final. OK, and then I'm going to subtract the temperature of the block initially. And then I have to add on the mass of the liquid uh, times the specific heat of the liquid um, times that change in temperature of the liquid, which is the final temperature of the liquid, same as the final temperature of the block, minus the initial temperature of the liquid right there. And this stuff is all equal to zero. So with a flurry of algebra, you can find the final temperature of the mixture. You can also find anything else in here that you want to find. But I'll just point out that that would be the mass of the block times the specific heat of the block times the initial temperature of the block plus the mass of the liquid times the specific heat of the liquid times the initial temperature of the liquid divided all by the mass of the block times the specific heat of the block plus the mass of the liquid times the specific heat of the liquid. Look at this. It's a weighted average. Of course it is. You've got temperature in both of these terms. You don't have temperature in both of those terms. This is a lot like um, average location of a mass or oh, what do we call it? We called it center of mass. This is the position of the center of temperature. Oh. Oh, and so the thing that's got more mass or a higher heat capacity is going to have a greater significance in the final temperature. If I have a big block, then it will greatly change the temperature of the liquid. If I have a small block, it won't change the temperature of the liquid very much. I suppose all of this makes fantastic sense. Next, we'll talk about heat flow. Bye-bye.